Hi, this is Luana Lacone Winner, and before we get started on this painting, I'm going to use a little gloves in a bottle to protect my hands from the oil and um, products that we'll be using here in the studio. Just need a little pea-sized bit, rub it well in, and so let's go. Hi, I'm Luana Lacone Winner, and this is a free art lesson. I'm a portrait painter in the Raleigh, North Carolina area, and you may have seen my website. Those of you that have taken my workshop know that I'm very concerned about the parts and pieces of the face. My workbook, Great Faces, goes into it in depth, and the DVD that I have about parts and pieces, the eye, goes into pastel, watercolor, and oil demonstrations about how to deal with the depth of the eye. But let's do a quick one here today. When you're dealing with the eye, we're going to work on the left eye facing you. Um, an eye socket tends to look something like this on a skull. And in that eye socket, this is the nose up here, the eyebrow would be up here. The eyeball actually fits down into this eye socket, and this is the one thing that most artists don't think about. They don't think about the fact that this eye sets into the head. I see so many portraits that are badly done because the eyes look like they're flat on the surface of the face. So if you drop this eye into that socket and then think of it in this manner, just build the eye outward, you've got an iris, a pupil, and probably this is the only place on the human body you can use pure black. And if we build the skin over top of the eye, let's put an eyelid right over top of it. Now keep in mind this eyelid has to fall, has to fall just in the right spot to shade and protect the eye, eye from light, wind, rain, all of that. So never allow the eyes to show the top of the iris, otherwise you'll get a very surprised look. Let's put another eyelid underneath. Some shadow on the skin in this area where the eye falls into that little bit of a cavity that's formed by that eye socket. We'll make it a little more pronounced than usual so we can keep our track of where that is. All right, here's the nose. Let's put a little bit of shadow along the area of the nose. This occipital orb area has this beautiful prominent bone that hits right up here over top of the eye to protect it. So that's going to be more in the light. That area above the eye is going to sit right into the light. And the zygomatic bone along the cheek is also going to be in the light. Now if we indicate the nose coming down here, Let's put a little bit of inference of hair on the eye, probably somewhere in that area. The whites of the eyes are never purely white, so let's give them a little bit of color. They're going to actually be very related to the skin tone, and I'm going to get a clean brush in a moment and fix this a bit better. So. If we have a bit of light coming from this direction, that means that there might be a highlight on the bone right up here under the eyebrow. On the eyelid in that position. Possibly on the lower eyelid right there. On the cheekbone. And if we were to put an eyebrow into it, 
to give it a little more position. Now, the trick to an eye to make it really seem very alive is to maintain that shadowed effect from the eyelid. So under this eyelid, this is the darkest part of the iris. Right across here, right across there. And as the light travels from this direction through the iris, you have a highlight that hits right about there, travels across through the liquid in the cornea of the eye, hits right about there, and then you're nearly done. Join me again for another free art lesson.